Okay, non acetone nail polish remover. <gasps> uh, I think I have acetone. Let me see if this works. I doubt it. Oh my god, John. <laughs> What's going on, John? <laughs> yeah, I'll clean it. Not right now. It's gonna take too long right now. <laughs>Today we are building the Horongi 60 and group by right now, two case colors, three different layouts, and two different weights. John has been working on this keyboard for a long time. It is the sandwich o-ring mount. Ooh, nice half plate. I love half plates. Ooh, I got a fresh PCB. It's also red. Whoa. Whoa. This is a special edition one, is it? I actually don't think this color is available for group buy. <laughs> so here's the board. Here's the side. Here's the back. A USB port. Front. It is a 60%. First thing I notice is that you have this nice like cherry lip right here. That's actually found throughout the entire board, right? So it's biggest right here, but then around the other sides, they are a lot thinner. So the top and the bottom bezels are going to be thicker than the two side bezels. But looking at the side, it's actually really subtle because here you have the top piece and then here you have the bottom piece that you can actually see right here. You can see the seam right here, which goes to the weight piece. And then here, as I mentioned, like the cherry lip, you can see that it has like the bezel right here. The back weight. So this is a special edition. The top piece, the bottom piece and then the way all kind of seamlessly go together into like the slanted piece. You have four feet that are non-adhesive. You have two on the bottom case itself and then two on the weight. And then if you look closely, you can see a nice little tiger. I'm looking from the bottom, the top piece encompasses both the bottom and the weight. So not only do you follow the same thing right here with the lip, but the lip is also visible on this part right here and it flows into the back Wait. Centered USB port. No visible screws. They're all hidden underneath the feet. So the case screws and the weight screws are slightly different. The weight screws are going to be a little bigger. Check out this weight. It looks like a crystal, right? Whoa. That's where the daughter board USB is hidden. Aside from the four case screws, you actually have more underneath. So you have the four that are hidden underneath the feet. So two on the weight, two on the case. But on the bottom piece, you actually have five more screws. So a total of seven screws on the bottom piece, two on the weight. And then these also use a different size. These screws right here are actually meant for the internal weight. So you don't actually need to remove this piece. Here is the mid piece that we're looking at. So this is where the internal weight would be. This hole right here is the channel for the JST cable. And then here you can see the O-ring mount points. So you have the four up top, you have the four on the bottom. So the internal weight won't look like this. <laughs> John, what the heck did you do? <laughs> okay, so it's not gonna look like this, but John tried to fill it. Obviously did not work too well, <laughs> but don't look at that. There's a frowny face too. <laughs> this is just John trying and experimenting. Once you put the internal weight in, you can see it leaves like a tiny sliver for the cable. So what I would recommend is putting the cable through first and then putting the weight in, right? It takes up quite a bit if you look at it. Instead of just like a small weight, this is a pretty hefty internal weight and it's tiered. So tiered as in like, if you look, it's not just one flat piece like a staircase right bottom case has relief cuts around the space bar so right here you can see the o-ring mounting looking at the top case you have these inserts right here so you have the four cuts and then these are friction fitted in you would just push it in right you'll get the strip and then you just have to cut it rip bozo you just have to cut it yourself and the same relief cuts for the stabs so this case is kind of like a seesaw but then once you have the back weight kind of incorporated on so you just oh that's so satisfying look you could just you could just slide it on 
Ooh. So in terms of plates, the board comes with an alu full plate. It will be anodized red. You will have alu full plate, which is what it comes with, alu half plate. You have the polypropylene plate, PC plate, palm plate. So five different plates, right? So if you want a half plate, your only choice is alu but you do have one half plate option. Default O-ring comes as 90A Duro. So it's gonna be the same for the O-ring and for the strip. It's both gonna be 90A. So nice red PCB. You see the nice silk screen, the Cafe H logo, gels PCB. So this is the solder version. As you can see, you can split the backspace. You can split the left shift. You can split the right shift. This unit does come in HHKB and they'll be providing, I think, the 6U wire. So you have different bottom rows that you can do. And then here you have stepped regular caps and you can put an indicator if you would like. Looking at the back, it does have the physical reset button. And then here you can see the fly daughter board Molex right here. And then here's the half plate, boom, right here. It starts at 420 USD. Okay. I'm going to do the laziest build possible. We're going to go split backspace. <laughs> Honestly, if you had done a lilac, like, you would have tapped into the girly market. I would have been like, oh my god. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying, but it was brown and beige. <laughs> If you had a, a lilac, <laughs> like three colors, it was so pretty. Okay, but that's just me being like a colorist. I like colors. <laughs> but yeah, solid board. I'm a hoe for this board for sure. I love the way this sounds. I thought with the 90 Duro, it was gonna be like a little too like stiff for me, but I like it a lot. I love the sound. I like a higher pitch board. With these switches, with this build, this is a very loud board, but I love it. Overall, typing on it is very consistent. It felt very satisfying to like type on, you know? I think if you're looking for a solid 60%, this is good. I think the only thing that needs to change is, yeah, the Molex is a little finicky. It could just have been my unit, but just overall in general, I think putting the cable and situating it can be a little rough. Yeah, so it's being changed, I think, according to John. The PCB one, they're gonna change it to JST. I think for the PCB, swapping that one to a JST is gonna make the build a lot easier. I don't want to say this is like a complicated build. It definitely requires some patience, especially aligning the daughter board cable with the weight, but John is going to address those changes with the group by unit. It's a very small pool of colors, right? So you have a beige, you have a brown. So if you're looking for like a more unique color, unfortunately, there's only two colors. I wish there was more colors. I understand why John didn't do more colors, but... <laughs> It's like stinky boys picking stinky colors, you know, but overall the board is very pretty Especially like the back weight. But yeah, here's the board it comes in three layouts So we have the wind key, but it'll also come in wind keyless and HHKB, so check out that weight So of course you can see my fingerprints, but check that out. This does technically use two o-rings So you have one around the entire PCB plate and then you have the four that are cut so two up here, two right here. And that was like pretty straightforward. This is a special colorway, but unfortunately no white units for the group buy. 
I'd say for the price, this is very fair. This has been a passion project of John's for a long time. Like you can tell. I think in terms of like build process, the biggest thing is the cables, but those are being fixed. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Typing feel though, I love typing on this. This is very fun to type on, very solid. If you've been looking for a good 60%, that's not like an entry level, but more of like a mid level board. I don't even want to say mid, but yeah, I'd say this is higher than entry. I would say if this were priced at like 500 and up, I would have been like, okay, this is like a high end price board, but it's priced as like more of a mid range, but it sounds like a high end. Does that make sense? I don't know if changing the O-rings would make it have like a softer feedback. I'd say it's still pretty firm though, right? And so I could see someone not liking it because it's not soft, but it doesn't have the harsh feedback of the top mount. It's like a softer top mount. I think my biggest critique is the colors though. <laughs> John, you missed the entire girly market. <laughs> I think that's just like the biggest thing. But yeah, if you're interested in this board, I would get it if you like keyboards that are similar to top mount, but not quite as stiff as a top mount. If you're looking for a 60% that comes in like Winky, Winkyless, HHKB, so you have like the different layouts. And if you like the overall theme of it, if you like the whole tiger theme, it's a high-end board, but it's priced lower than what I honestly think it should be, right? <laughs> That's just John. John doing John things. Just stinky boys doing stinky stuff, you know? Thanks, John, for sending it out to me. I like it.